Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 112 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. So today, I want to work a little bit more with Ars Magica 2, because there's definitely some things that can help me out in my fight against the Enderman that Ars Magica 2 is going to help us provide. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, first get something to help me kill those bosses that I'm having so much trouble with a little bit faster and easier, and for that, I'm getting some Manulin. Uh, as we know, Manulin is the most damaging material that we're going to be able to get and if we look around in our tables here we'll be able to discover that there's a special type of weapon we can make in Tinker's Construct that has a natural ability called Armor Pierce, aka it pierces any armor. Now I happen to know that a lot of the uh, bosses have uh, quite a bit of armor on them, so having this rapier here is going to be a very nice ability for us. It does have less damage, but it's going to wind up doing more damage overall, I believe. So let me get some of the things I'm going to want to get started with. Let's see, where are my Tinker's books? Did I bring them back with me? Um... Let's see, Mighty Smelting is the name of one of the books. Did I not bring them back here? Could have sworn I did. I hate when you move, you can't find anything anymore. So is this guy cruising or what? He should be. Molten glass. Ah. Go back in there. Get back in there, Manulin. Just wondering why the molten glass itself isn't actually coming out. Because <laughs> it is whitelisted. Alright, I'll figure that out later. Uh, where are my books? Probably back in the overworld. Let's take a look if I left them out here. They're not here, I'm gonna have to craft them again. Oh, there they are. So let's get these guys and we'll take a look. So basically what we're looking at, tools and materials, if we went here and found, where is it? Rapier, there it is. Um, its damage is low, but it makes up for it with the ability that ignores armor and blocking all together. So we're going to try it out. I don't know for sure if this will work with the bosses. It, it's something I've used in the past, but it's, some of them have changed. So I don't know if it's still going to work, but it's worth trying anyway. So to get a rapier, we're going to want, um, let's see, a tool rod, a sword blade, and a crossbar. Let me figure out exactly which abilities or which materials I want to make stuff out of. I'm thinking I'm going to want uh, the cactus for the tool rod. So let's do that. Cactus for the tool rod. Should be just one is fine. We'll use obsidian for the uh, binding, and then we'll use the manulin for the sword blade part. So sword blade cast can go in here. Let's make sure that manulin's on the bottom. Oh, I know why it's not working. Herpty derp. I am a derp. There we go. Just needed to filter that downwards. All right. So let's set this up. Uh, we'll get our part builder here. I want a tool rod pattern. That'll be cactus. This will make it so that the more damage it has, the more damage it does. And then, do I not have that little crossbar pattern thing? I might not. Let me get it real quick. I just need a blank pattern. Really? No wooden sticks in here? Goodness, it's not my day, is it? Okay, so, stencil table, oh, ha, huh, stencil table already had some of this in there. Let's see, I need the small one. I think it's this, the crossbar pattern. Then we can put these together. So the crossbar pattern will be made with obsidian. That'll be nice. And then finally get our rapier built. So this, this, and the manual and sword. Cool. So this guy's going to have Reinforce 3 and Jagged on it. Reinforce 3 coming from the obsidian and Jagged coming from the cactus. Now I want to boost this guy with as many 
humanly possible upgrades to damage as possible. So for that, we're going to need quite a lot of nether quartz. So how am I for nether quartz at the moment? I'm, I can't be out. Am I out? I am out. All right, so I guess I know what I'm doing next. Off to the nether with the wand of equal trade. Um, and I'm going to start collecting myself some nether quartz. I will be back in probably about five or 10 minutes after I get a good supply of nether quartz because I need some anyway, apparently for my AE system, but I'm also going to need to collect a bunch uh, for the purposes of making this weapon very, very powerful. All right, see you guys in a minute. All right guys, so if you wanna make the very best dagger possible you're going to want to upgrade it uh, and you'll notice that we only have three modifiers on this if i really wanted to get more modifiers out of it i could have used paper maybe i should even remake this with paper that'll get me an extra modifier that might not be a bad idea let me do that real quick let's see do i still have that cactus thingy yeah let me snag myself another bit of manulin why is there two cobalt ingots in there i couldn't even tell you there we go I'm actually going to remake this sword just before I get started. I don't really need the whole obsidian bit to it. So let's do this. I'll remake this. We'll have the obsidian shard. Instead of that, we're going to do the paper. And for the tool rod pattern, I'll go cactus. That'll probably be your best bet for this weapon. So it'll be the same because the paper crossbar doesn't affect the durability at all. So I'm just going to do you... Manulin, Cactus, now we're talking. Notice how this guy now has four modifiers available. Awesome. If I throw a gold block and a diamond on there, that'll get me up to five modifiers and another star, six modifiers. So I can modify this a lot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put you away because I don't really need you guys and it's time for quartz. Cool. So this will take a minute. And I'm gonna upgrade him as much as possible. All right, I think this will about do it, if I'm right. 424 out of 432, I think I need two more. So this was almost um, two stacks of quartz blocks. Not quite, but almost. That should do it. Yeah, 432 out of 432. Uh, this guy's attack damage is 10 hearts at the moment. Uh, you'll see 20 attack damage. By comparison, this guy only does 15 attack damage. So he's already doing more damage than my current sword, but he's also going to ignore armor. So I would like to go and do a little bit of a test, especially with that warder guy. So let's get uh, some more boats. And I want to just test and see how good a job this is going to be. And let's also get, oh, I don't want to put that in there. That's all right, I'll get it back in a bit. Uh, buckets of water. So let's head back to the overworld, make sure we're well fed and everything. And I'm kind of curious to see how much damage the comparison will be. You ready? Let's go check it out. So we're basically just gonna wanna run off here. Uh, I should probably sleep through the night just to, you know, manage to be all right. There we go. Get it to start raining. And I'll meet you guys back here in a minute because this does take a moment. There we go, that should be done and it's raining, nice. Okay, so bucket or a boat and a bucket of water. So let's see, this guy, 75 health, right? I uh, split. That did one damage, that's it. All right, 64. All right, so that does about nine damage, right? So not so bad. Let's see what this thing does. That seemed like a lot to me. Yeah, look at that. That's like three or four hits and he's dead. <laughs> That's nice. That was good. All right, so let's get this guy. Let's try that one more time. This is definitely the slayer of bosses, that's for sure. Yeah, 54. It does almost twice as much damage, which is pretty much awesome. So it's like an instant kill. Like, two or three shots, you're dead. See you later. Nice fighting you. Alright. A couple more of these fights, and then I'll meet you guys back at the base. We're going to make a few more spells. Alright guys, we are back. And I've gone ahead and poked around through the Oculus here and spent all my blue skill points. Uh, what did I spend them on? Well, I'll show you. 
Uh, so first off, I kind of went through the defense tree. Uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and make a spell that has a lot of buffs on it, because the more abilities that you have on your spell, the more experience you're going to get. So basically right here, I'll right click and you'll see I got a decent amount of experience, like what was that, 19-ish maybe, uh, for casting that spell. But then there's also diminishing return. So if I keep casting it, you'll notice that I get less and less experience over time. So I don't want to just like spam the same spell over and over again. That's going to, you know, cause me to have diminishing returns. Now, after a period of time, I don't know exactly what it is, but 30 seconds is probably a good number to say. It's probably less, actually, I think. That diminishing return will kind of go away, and you'll notice when I right-click, I get a good chunk of experience again. So your best bet is to have, like, a really large bang for your buck spell, right? The more uh, abilities on it, the better. So what I'm going to do is dig through the Arcane Compendium and find all the abilities that I can make. So I got Leap, I got Slow Fall, I got Haste and Swift Swim, I got Regeneration and Heal from the Defense Tree. From the Utility Tree, I, I got the uh, Touch ability, which is um, one of the things that determines how the spell works. Instead of it being a projectile you shoot or a self-spell, Touch, you right-click on something. It's like, you know, you right-click on it and the spell affects whatever you right-click click as opposed to a projectile being shot out um so we got that and we had to get these guys to get down past dig which will dig out whatever it hits light which is a cool one we got uh night vision true sight uh, i did grab disarm even though i don't want to use it for myself right now and i also grabbed the plant and plow skills that are related to farming just because they're neat to have um so i think i could use a couple more blue skill points but really not much right now so what i want to do then is make a spell so i've got my book and quill already in the table here and i'm ready to make a self spell and I want to make one that has a lot of abilities on it so let's throw I don't want binding I want regeneration I want uh, I guess I could throw heal on there I don't know if I really need heal on there um, don't want physical damage or fire damage or dig or light light by the way if you do make it with a self ability gives you like a radius of light but I just don't want to do that night vision true sight those are nice to have I don't want to disarm myself plant and plow won't do much leap slow fall haste and swift swim and let me just make sure there's no other buffs that i can get that are blue i don't want slow so that would be bad i can't get to any of these yet because uh, they're all green and i don't have any green skill points just yet though hopefully soon so i think that's pretty much where i'm going to be uh, wrapped up at so charm won't do anything for me so that's good nice water breathing i could get but i think i need to get some other stuff before i can get down to there so for now, this is a pretty good spell. So let's go ahead and name it Buff Yourself. Yeah, that sounds cool. Now, uh, one thing you're going to notice, though, when you place this on here, remember I told you that there's a limit in here to the number of abilities you can have. This thing has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points to it. Um, eight abilities or eight things in there, right? The Nether Quartz gives you three effects. The... Um, Iron Blocks gives you plus four effects for a total of plus seven. So I don't have a strong enough altar to make this spell. That's why it's turned in red. So what we're gonna have to do, and you can kind of see I'm already ready for it, is uh, use Moonstone. I discovered I had enough Moonstone for this. I've been kind of collecting it anytime it falls nearby. And you'll notice that the Moonstone gives you a good old nine effects. The only one that's better is Sunstone, but you can only find that in lava in the nether. So I figured, you know what, I have Moonstone on hand, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm just gonna want of equal trade the two iron ones up here and hopefully one, two, three, four. That will allow, maybe not. I might have to break and replace. It might not like me doing one of equal trade on this. Let's just try it and see. There we go, cool. So maybe it's, it's probably grabbing when the player places the block to update the multi-block. So by doing the one of equal trade, eh. So what I'm gonna do next is make sure my AE system is fully aware of how to make all the stuff I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna to need to try to make different runes, um, Vintium dust, some of this stuff. And we're gonna try and automate as many of these different things as possible. Now, not all of them are gonna be that easy to automate. You know, there's some things in here like the Aum, which I know for a fact is a, is a flower. I don't know how many of those I might have on hand. I have one. Okay, that's cool. Let's look into something here. Bone meal. I want to see if bone meal and grass will get me an alm. So, give me... Oh, there's so many flowers in here. That's a lot of flowers. Uh, let's get some grass. And let's go... 
let's say, there we go. I'm just gonna, I don't want it to leach in over there. I don't want this to be a grass area. I wanna leave it dirt, so I don't wanna let it interact in any way. That should be good, good enough sized, right? And bone meal, go. So let me test this for a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get alms by bone meal and grass, and I'll be back in just a minute. All right, guys, I have an idea, actually. Um, I'm gonna have to first off get some more stuff in this thing, and I also realized what I need to do in order to get alm. So alm is not terribly easy to come by. In fact, I'm probably going to have to go bat mode for this thing. Hopefully I made everything correctly. So I'm killing my uh, auto-crafting ability at the moment. Bear with me. Uh, alm is not terribly easy to come by. The only way to get it is to grow witchwood trees. And whenever they grow, they have a chance to uh, pretty much produce some alm for you, which would be nice. Uh, so I'm going to have to automate the creation of witchwood trees. And I think that's going to be a fun little project for us. So... We're going to work on that in just a minute here. Uh, meanwhile, I am rebuilding this guy just a little bit taller. <laughs> Dropped myself. There we go. We can see the pattern providers are in there now. This should be good. Okay, good. There is one more in there. So let's get in this side. We can do this, this guy. Hopefully this will work, just one taller. I don't think it has to be a perfect cube. Nice, now I've got seven pages of patterns. So that was not a very expensive way to increase the size of this thing. If I wanted to increase it like, you know, make it like four by four or five by five, that would have been a little bit more expensive. All right, so om, we need to find om. So let's head for the overworld and find some. I think I know where I can find some. Let's look around in the forest, because usually you'll find a witchwood tree in the forest. So the main thing we're looking for are witchwood trees. Ah, witchwood leaves, that's exactly what I need. Cool. So at the base of these trees is where you'll typically find alm, though not 100% of the time. Um, and I might have even collected the alm that was here, and maybe that's where I got the little bit I have already. So let's hope, just like silverwood trees, these things are not super common. So we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that we get some witchwood leaves out of this. And if we don't, I'll go off camera and find another couple trees and keep whacking at the leaves until I find what I'm looking for. So far, I'm not getting a good feeling out of this. And I could use a sickle probably, and that might speed things up. I think I've got one in here somewhere. Maybe not. All right, if I don't have one, that's fine. I'll come back in a minute once I find a witchwood sapling. There we go, finally got a witchwood sapling out of this process, nice. So like I said, they're not super common. They're kind of like silverwood trees in that they're super rare to find the actual saplings for. So we're gonna kind of have to get lucky, but oh, there's an alm, see? They typically spawn at the base of these trees. So it looks like it's getting night out. I'll meet you guys back at our uh, base in the nether, or the void age, and then we will uh, get to trying to automate this tree production stuff. There's only one more thing I'm gonna need. Um, and I think I'll have to come back to the overworld to get it. All right, so what I want to get with this um, is the other thing that's kind of required in order to grow this thing. So I'm actually going to make a reinforced tank. How's my Enderium crafting going? I did request that you guys start working, didn't I? Should be here in a minute. Uh, and while I'm at it, I should make a pump. So let's get a mining well, a tank, and a pump. How am I for redstone engines? Shouldn't be too hard of a request, hopefully. Biogas engines, but not quite what I'm looking for. Where's the redstone one? There it is. I'll probably want four of these. All right, so now that I've got those ready, is my Enderium ready? Awesome. So we've got everything we need. 
to go get ourselves some liquid essence. And the reason I'm getting um, an Enderium tank, which by the way can store 64 buckets of liquid, not too shabby, uh, let's head to the overworld and go find an essence pool. We're going to want quite a bit of this stuff, probably. Here we go. Found ourselves at these coordinates, a nice little lake. It's small. You're not going to find a ton of this essence typically altogether, but you know what? It'll get the job done. So let's just set this up real quick. One, two, three, four. And I'll let this thing drain out uh, all the liquid in here. Be back in a minute when it's finished. All right, guys, got ourselves a full tank of essence here. Meet you back at the base. All right, so one thing to keep in mind about witchwood trees is they're very slow to grow. So we're going to want to make that a little bit faster. And we have a way to handle that, don't we? Absolutely. Uh, I'm thinking about getting this rock crusher out of here because he's really not necessary anymore. See you guys later. And if I lose some of those, I'm not going to cry about it. The rock crusher really has not been my friend recently. He's not doing anything I want him to do. Sorry, rock crusher. We're on the outs. So uh, I collected my little uh, setup here that I had for the longest time. I think I'm going to put it right, let's see, put the alchemical furnace here. And we'll put the, let's get some saplings, of which I should have many. Yeah, 17,000. I think we're all right. Um, we'll put them in there on the top. Let's get an export bus or two. Just need two of them and some cables. There we go. Good. So we'll export bus. There we go. Here and here. We really don't need this guy anymore. So we'll ditch him and plug that in. So this one should be programmed with saplings. Perfect. No. Well, I guess that's fine. You're really a charger going up there. And then uh, the other one needs to be alimentum. So that should be good. I'm going to just put some stuff away here for the time being. Inventory getting cluttered as usual. So in the bottom goes alimentum. And that's your job to cook that stuff up. Cool. Then we need some arcane alembics. One, two, three. Perfect. We'll label these guys so things don't get wonky. And then we'll have something like this. So I think the way we had it before, we can't just put it right next to it. So we should be able to do something like this. If we had... There we go. This guy can be... This is the acorn one. That's Granum, right? Yeah. And then this guy can be Arbor. Perfect. And then it's just a matter of recreating the Essentia Mirror linking. So we'll put that guy there. There we go. Link to age 11. Perfect. I like it. Looks good. What I'm thinking is I will get some dirt and I'll also get a, probably want an elevator and some ink. And finally I want a bucket, regular old bucket and up we go. Now uh, this was going to be 
I was going to put it on this roof here, but I've got clear glass here. Maybe that's not where I want it to be. Where should I put this little Witchwood farm? Maybe I should extend out from here a little bit. Might not be a terrible idea. E or I could put it right here. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, right here should be fine. I'm not really using this thing at the moment. So what I'm going to need is right here should be a good place for it. I'm, I'm going to bring it in one more. And around that, I'm going to need to have... It doesn't have to be dirt. It can be anything. You'll see why in a minute. If you guessed that's where the liquid essence is going to go, then you guessed correctly. Cool. So the Witchwood Sapling goes here. If you want Witchwood Saplings to grow, they must um, wind up sitting surrounded by liquid essence. So that's what the bucket's for. We can scoop that stuff up. The more source blocks you have, the faster this thing will grow. So if you really want this thing to grow quickly, source blocks are going to be your friend. I might wind up moving this. I'm pretty sure the, um, the harvester here is not going to be able to interact with the Witchwood tree. Pretty sure. Uh, but I'm not 100%. Might, I might actually get rid of purple. Let's do this so that it doesn't plant back here. And that'll really kind of prevent any more, any possible interaction here. That'll be good. So this thing takes a long time to grow, but of course we've got the lamp of growth to help us out with that. So what I'm thinking then is something like... You? And that should be cool. And this thing should grow rather quickly. Um, let me put this stuff away. Might even get that sigil up and running again. Because why not? <laughs> Alright, cool. So that looks good to me. So the essence pool, just like that, is your most efficient way to get this witchwood to grow. It'll grow at its fastest rate with eight uh, source blocks surrounding it. And uh, with the lamps of growth, I hope this will speed it up. And whenever they grow, they'll create uh, some on blocks on the ground. So let's give it a minute and see what happens. It's not 100%, by the way. It is possible that it'll grow without creating on blocks, but we'll see. Hey, there we go. Look at that. We just got three alm out of that process. Nice. One, two, you can actually see they're a decent range. That's why I kind of wanted to make it so that, uh, you know, we had a good long range of stuff. Awesome. Another one? Wow, five? That's cool. I'll take that. Um, I don't know for sure, but I think Om will continue to spawn nearby as long as the Witchwood's here. So I want to test that. We're going to leave this up and running for a bit, and we'll come back and see if any more Om show up. If they do, it means that we don't have to break this down and replant it all the time. If they don't, it means we're going to have to automate the um, harvesting and replanting of this tree. And as you can see, the harvest here is uh, taking down all those trees, but it's not going to mess with the Witchwood. For whatever reason, it doesn't recognize as a tree. I don't know. That might be a good thing if we want to leave it up. Um, it might not. We'll find out. All right, guys, so here's what I'm going to do. Between this episode and next, I'm going to let this just hang out here, and we'll see if any more Alm um, show up. If they do, great. If not, okay, that's fine with me. I'll uh, have to set up next episode a way to automatically uh, chop this tree down and replant it. Uh, obviously, MFR is not going to work. Uh, so we're going to have to come up with something a little bit different uh, to handle that. And if that's necessary, cool. If not, uh, I'm also going to off camera between this episode and next fill up my molecular assembler chamber here with any old thing. Looks like this actually is now on page five. Interesting. Cool. So anything that we need to craft for Ars Magica. So I'm actually going to, a good way to go through this is just to go through the book and see what items it needs. And then I'll kind of go through and just auto craft things. So blank rune, for example, uh, Ventium dust, etc. Blank rune. And I do know that we'll probably need some of the other flowers, uh, the, the blue and red ones from Ars Magica, and those should be obtainable with bone meal. No Aum yet. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I just want to see. Because I've once or twice seen Aum show up. I think Aum showed up just a minute ago after the tree grew. But I haven't seen any yet since then. So I'm really not sure. 
Uh, so yeah, bone meal will work to get the other flowers from Ars Magica, but there's so many flowers and grass, it's unlikely. I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to kind of figure out a bit of automation around those guys. But otherwise, I'm just going to continue going through here, like Vintium Dust, Lesser Focus, I'll want to teach that, right? So Vintium Dust, I don't know, is that the one I can craft in here? I just have to smelt Vintium Ore, that shouldn't be a problem. And then uh, Lesser Focus, for example, not hard to do. I'm going to need more of those blank things. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up the episode here, and then we'll be back next time with a lot of the auto-crafting stuff done and ready, and uh, hopefully some more alm. If not, chopping down the tree automation. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, take it easy.